Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today's video, I'm gonna be taking you through some of Vancouver's most affordable suburbs to rent in and some of the suburbs that you can avoid living in. You can visit, you can look, but you can't touch because you will burn through all your money in one month's rent, basically. So if you are on a low income, like a gal here, stay tuned. I'm gonna take you through all the suburbs that you can afford and you can actually live in Vancouver. Okay, first things first, let's rip the bandaid off. Let's go through the least affordable suburbs in Vancouver. The ones that you are going to have to uh, dip through your savings, steal from your parents, sell your kidney. Like basically it's, it's dire straits if you move to these suburbs. So these are ones to avoid if you are a student or if you are looking to actually have a life here in Vancouver. <laughs> Suburbs to avoid, number one, Point Grey. What a beautiful place Point Grey is, but what a beautiful place to never live. Just go visit there. Seth Rogen has a house there. The owner of and founder of Lululemon has a house there. It is bougie. It is Beverly Hills vibes on the beach. It's just gorgeous for sightseeing. And again, looky but no touchy, okay? Next up, Yale Town. Yale Town, there's such a stigma with people who are from Yale Town that they're yuppies and it's all this new money and blah blah blah. Like Yale Town itself is beautiful, like there's cobblestone roads, there's a lot of history there uh, as far as history goes in Vancouver, which isn't, you know, it's not like it's New York or anything like that. But there is some character in Yale Town, but it's not worth living there to, you know, chop off your right arm and sell it on the black market, you know? Save your money, don't live in Yale Town. Trust me, the rent is extremely expensive there. Speaking of expensive, Shaughnessy. Look, I'm putting in Shaughnessy because those houses there are insane. A lot of them are used as houses for movies and like sets. Uh, here in Vancouver, it is the Hollywood of the North. But a lot of the houses are empty, unfortunately, or there's probably like one old person living in it. So it's a lot of old money, beautiful tree-lined streets. It's very, if you're from Melbourne, it's like South Yarra, Turak kind of vibes, like huge block, huge houses, and not many people are even in those houses. So if you ever see anything cheap for rent in Shaughnessy, it's probably a scam and you're probably gonna get kidnapped. So don't do it. And Shaughnessy, again, just, Looky but no touchy. I'm just gonna put this one in as a suburb to avoid living in just because of the crime and the sort of safety of the area. Avoid living in the downtown east side. Obviously not on East Hastings Street, like where I'm talking about, but even even it's bordering on the gas town now. It's just not the nicest at night and I would not feel safe visiting friends who lived there or you know, living there myself. So I don't want to recommend it to anyone. Just be mindful of anywhere that is around East Hastings Street. If you are on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace looking at houses, just, I would go and view the property before accepting anything regardless, like of everything in this list, view the property. Do not just say yes to something online because you probably will get scammed. Trust me, wait till you arrive in Vancouver, then go apartment hunting. You think you're getting ahead by doing it if you're still overseas? Don't. Wait till you get here, trust me. Another suburb to avoid is UBC. I, it's like its own sort of community over at UBC. If you're at the uni and you've got a lot of money and your parents are paying for residence, go for it, live your best life. But if you are an average Joe, if you're just living it up and you're borderline broke like the rest of us, then don't move to UBC. It's like its own city. I guess, so it's like a uni town, right? Like once you're there, you're there, you don't usually leave and there's not much there per se. So I would just avoid living around UBC unless you are a student. And also if you're not a student and you're looking at places and you're like, oh wow, like there's a basement suite and it's so cheap. You're probably living with like five students and it's like a tiny little matchbox apartment. So just be really mindful of the UBC area. Like you can see on the map where it is and just know if you don't want to live in a student party house vibe, avoid UBC, I would say. And last but not least in terms of least affordable suburbs and places to avoid, avoid living in Coal Harbor. Coal Harbor is where all the bougie Riverdale people live in their hotels while they're filming. It is the closest suburb to the mountains. So when you're in any of the 
restaurants or condos there you're overlooking the beautiful mountains and the sea in Stanley Park like that's where it is in reference to the city but the apartments there are pretty much 99% new builds and being a new build they're gonna be stacked on top of each other so you're probably on like a 20-story condo and they're going to be so expensive and for what you know if you're going to be working from home never leaving your apartment and want to spend all your money on rent go for it but again Coal Harbor is beautiful to visit just visit it it's stunning there are parks restaurants you can walk past all the bougie yachts whatever you want to do in Coal Harbor do it but I would avoid looking at any sort of rentals there because you're just gonna sell a body part basically to move in there Okay, now that is out of the way. I'm going to run through all the most affordable suburbs if you are living alone slash living with a group of people. And these are all, in my opinion only, these are all safe, fun options where each suburb has a lot going on in different ways. They are all sort of hitting different markets as well. So I'm just gonna run through them quickly. If you guys want a more deep dive on any of these suburbs, let me know. I'll be happy to make a video on that. And let's get through them. Here are some affordable suburbs. We have New Westminster, Burnaby, Strathcona, Oak Ridge, Surrey, Victoria dash Fraserview, like that area. Hastings Sunrise, so not fully like downtown east side, but on the way to Burnaby, that is affordable. And if you're sharing and you have a bit more money to burn, go for Kitsilano. I lived in Kitsilano before living downtown, so Kits is just amazing it's such a good time dunbar which is just on the border of going to ubc the dunbar area is a lot more family friendly there are bigger blocks it's not as busy party party as kits is so that is a nice suburb there there's a lot of little shops it's a good vibe so that that's dunbar basically any the area around the dunbar avenue mount pleasant is really fun as well that is where main street and canby is Again, just filled with shops, restaurants, small businesses. There's a lot of arts uh, around that area. So Mount Pleasant is a good vibe. Hard to describe. I can describe it to Melbourne suburbs, but not really like generally for anyone else watching this video. So yeah, Mount Pleasant is a great time. So another fun area would be around Commercial Drive. So this is kind of around Grandview dash Woodland area yeah commercial drive how i describe it as a person they have tattoos they have a blunt fringe they like to wear beanies in summer they have cut off jean shorts or like cool corduroys they thrift they have a record player they love black coffee they love going for like bar hopping they love a good vegan meal like that's the sort of energy that commercial drive has i'd describe it like the northern suburbs of melbourne city like fitzroy brunswick street area i can see that living in a share house in on the commercial area would be a fun time and another nice safe chill area kind of like dunbar it would be fairview so fairview is the weird area around olympic village a lot of condos there beautiful views and a little bit pricey but it's again a lot more quieter than downtown you've sort of got the energy of tourists in the summer but then it'd be really quiet over the winter it's a good area to get in and out of like you could probably have a car there you could have a car in most of these suburbs as well kits i don't think you really would need a car you could just use evo but dunbar is a bit far out commercial is as well but the skytrain goes right into commercial broadway which is really nice and central so all of those suburbs would be affordable if you're sharing particularly i mean if you are well off enough you could live there solo but uh yeah the solo places definitely would be the burnaby surrey new west if you wanted to go as far out as langley or abbotsford places like that will be about an hour from vancouver but you can afford to live a lot more comfortably and just drive into the city. But anyway, let's focus on Vancouver. Those are my top most affordable places to live in. And then, as I said, all the ones that you should avoid moving to if you've never been here before and you need a bit of a guide. I hope this has helped you at all. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you would like to see any more Vancouver content, I have a full playlist of all of my Vancouver versus Australia or just Vancouver versus Vancouver, you know, and all my thoughts and feelings as I've been living here. But yeah. Yeah, that is all for this video. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Love you lots and I'll see ya in my next video.